In this video, let's talk about encapsulation. Now I know that's a new term, but when we started with OOP's concept, now encapsulation is a part of OOP. So when I say uh, let's implement object-oriented programming, so yeah, we have talked about class, we have talked about objects, and the next step is encapsulation here. Now by word, what encapsulation means? You know, we have the concept of capsules where we have uh, medicines powder there. So basically we can imagine capsule as something which is keeping it close, keeping it tight, and no one from the outside world can use it. That makes sense, right? So what we can do here is, let's say, let's design a class, okay? And let's name this class as human. I know we can use different names, but let's go with human here. And I know we are aliens, but let's say, let's say this is human. Now here, when you have this human class, a human will have some parameters, right? Example, uh, if you remember, we have talked about this before. As a human or as a person, we know a lot of different stuff. So in your mind, you have a lot of different concepts or you know a lot of things. Example, you know your name, you know your where you stay, you know your favorite actor, you know your favorite trainer. Of course, you can name, you can use my name there, but uh, just kidding. So we have different information, right? Now, can you imagine this, that all the information are actually stored in your brain as a variable box? Uh, I'm a big fan of Pixel movie, uh, which is... I don't know the exact movie name, but you know, uh, Pac-Man basically eats people and then they become pixels. So you can imagine the data in your mind is cube, okay? And in that box, you have the data. Example, your name is stored in a box, which name Naveen, or which name's name is equal to, and in the box will be having a value. For me, it's Naveen. Uh, let's say if you are uh, your favorite actor, so you'll be having my favorite actor, and the box inside the box will be having a value. So what I'm saying is, all the data is stored in your brain in the format of boxes, variables. Now, of course, uh, you can use these variables, right? So let's say my name is Naveen, and let's say if, if I'm walking on a street, and if someone is asking my name, I might provide my name. What if someone is asking my email address? I might provide my email address, depending upon who that person is. What if someone is asking for my uh, children's name, my wife's name, my family name, my Facebook password? No, I'm, I'm not going to share those things. It's because there's something called privacy, right? And yeah, I know a lot of people don't believe in privacy. But of course, no one should be able to get your data directly, right? It's not like your data is available for the entire world to see. It's there, it's closed. No one can see the data. Of course, they can see my Facebook profile, but uh, no one can see the data inside your brain. That's important. If they want to know your data, they have to ask. And you can decide, do you want to share or not? In the same way, let's say we have this human class, and in this human class, we have a variable called age, and we have a string which is named. That's it, just two variables. And now, if I want to access those data, of course, I have to create an object of human here. And let's say this is the human object, new human. And once you got this object, with this object, you can fetch data, right? Uh, of course, you can set the values as well. And for this particular object, I can say obj.age is, let's say, 11 and obj.name is, let's say, Naveen. I know that's not my age, but at this point, it's okay. So we got these values, and we got this object created here. Now, what I do is, what if someone asks me, hey, human, or maybe someone is directly, directly trying to fetch the data. Example, if I say S out, and if I try to say obj.name. Now, what we are doing is, just by using the object, anyone can fetch data. Okay, and this will work, okay? It will not give any issues. I will say compile and run. You can see we, we are able to fetch data. And syntactically, there's no issue. But then if you really think that we have to implement software for the physical world or the real world, it should match with the real world. Not all the data are directly accessible and we want to control it. So one way to do that is what you can do is you can make your variables private. Now, what do you mean by this private keyword? Of course, we'll have a detailed discussion later. At this point, private simply means this particular variable, which is age, is accessible only in the same class. Let me repeat. This, this age variable is accessible in the same class. The moment you make it private, it's private. No one, can, no one from the outside world can use it. Of course, I can use my data because that's private to me but you can't access my data, because that's private to me, right? The same thing can be done for the name variable here. And if you observe, the moment I do that, we got an error here. I mean, of course, 
uh, VS Code helps you there. VS Code says, hey, you know, this variable age is not visible. You know why it's not visible? Because it's private. Now, going forward, this is what you have to do. Every time you create an instance variable, repeat, let me repeat. Every time you create an instance variable, make it private. No one from the outside world should be able to use it. Now you will say, hey, that doing that, we are actually breaking all the purpose of building a software, right? If no one is able to access this data, then why we are even creating these variables? That's right. The reason why we're creating this variable is because we can store values and someone should be able to access them. They should be able to access them, but not directly. Okay, so there should be some indirect way. Yeah, we have an indirect way. So the way they should be able to access this data is with the help of methods. Example, let's say if you want to know my name, you have to ask for it. And I will decide should I, should I share that data with you or not. So if you say, hey, what's your name? I will say, okay, I will ask my brain what's my name because most of the time I don't remember my own name. So I will say, hey, what's my name? My brain will say, okay, your name is Naveen. And then from my methods, which is my mouth or my by uh, using my handwriting or by typing somewhere, there is a way I have to share that data with you, right? I have some methods, behavior. I can talk, I can write, I can type. Now using those behavior, I can share the information, okay? Not like anyone can just come to me by, it, they will break my head and say, okay, I got the data. Now that's not how it, how it, how it should work. So how do I, comp how do I, uh, Restrict it. So what we can do is we can make it private. We are restricting restricting it. The only way to access them is with the help of methods. So what I can do is temporarily I will just comment these two sections and I will assign the value here itself. And we can do that. Uh, I will say name is Naveen. And then here, coming back to public, I will say public. I want to get data. I want to say, hey, get age. Okay. And of course you can use any method name, doesn't matter, but let's say get age. And this will return a uh, integer value. So I will say int here and this will return. So this will basically return the age. Now the question is, can I access age here? And the answer is yes, you can. You can access the age variable inside a method of a same class. That's right. This get age is defined in the same class. That's why you are able to access that. And if you see age here or name here, so we are trying to get the data of another class. Demo and human, there are two different classes. Okay, makes sense now. Now we can also do, do it for the name. So for the name, I will say public string, uh, string get name, and this will basically return a name. Okay, so we got two methods, get age and get name, and then we are returning the age and name. Now, if someone wants to fetch it, I can simply say, hey, you know, don't call name, that will not work because name is a variable which is private. You can access the methods. You can say obj.getName. That's how you can fetch a value. Of course, you can also fetch the age. What I can do is I can just say plus, I can give a colon in between, and I can say obj.getAge, okay? Uh, now I think we should be able to access it. Let's try and compile, run. Oh, it's working. Can you see that? We got Naveen and Levin. So the point to remember is every time you create a variable which is private, we are making sure that it is restricted. No one from the outside world should be able to use it. So this age variable, this name variable will be used by their own methods. That actually makes some sense. Okay, but there's one little problem here. What if I want to assign the value? What if I don't specify the value here? Cut and cut. Let's say we have the variables, but don't I, I don't assign the value. Now, of course, by, if you don't assign the value, the default value will be zero and a null string. But I want to, how do I set the value? Now, for getting the data, we have said get. For setting data, can we say set? Let's try. So here for age, I will say public. Now, when you're setting the value, you're not getting in return something, right? So you will say void and you will say set age. Okay. Now, it's just that when you are setting the age, you have to ask, hey, what is the value? So maybe you can also accept a value here. Maybe I can say A, right? And then here I can say age is equal to A. Now what I mean by that is, of course you have a method which is accepting a value, assigning that to age, but how it will work. So let's come back here, which the, the portion which we have commented. I want to set the age, right? So instead of setting the age to the variable, I can say obj.setAge, we are using a method now, not the variable. And in this particular bracket, you can pass the argument. 
and let's say the age is 30. So now we are passing the value. Now this value will be assigned to this A and from A this will be assigned to age. Can we do the same thing for string? Let's try. I will say public void set name and of course we have to also accept the name but what's the format of a for format of name it is string name i will say n this time and here i can say name is equal to n so whatever value you pass will be assigned to this n and from n it will be assigned to name now the same thing need to be changed here so i will just cut this part and i will say cut this part as well i will say set name and in the double quotes i will pass the name and the name here is Naveen. I mean, I'll use a different name this time. I will set a D. Okay. And now I will just come back here, clear the screen, compile, run. Can you see that we got ready and tidy? So what we are doing is we are assigning the value with the help of methods here. And we are getting the value with the help of methods here. So that's how we can access this data. Now what we are doing is we are making your variable private and then the only way to access them is with the help of methods, right? So basically we are binding our data with the methods. The only way to access that data is with methods. So no one from the outside world can use your variables directly. So somewhere we are encapsulating the data and methods and that is encapsulation. Okay, simple stuff, right? Uh, so yeah, that's it from this video. Let's try to understand this more. What is this get and set methods? Uh, can we use different names or only this name will work? That we'll discuss in the next video.